Come here. It's okay. Come here. No. Oh, this is my kitty. He wants to say hi. No, he doesn't. He wants to leave. It's like, fuck you. Anyways. So, yeah, the... Hello. Boo, Boo would like to say hi, too. No, Boo Boo's angry at me. Hey, what's up? It's Thykus. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be reviewing a random band that I found off of YouTube ads. Because I found two, and honestly this may turn into a series, so I'm um, giving you a heads up about that. If you enjoy this video, so um, yeah, let's get right <laughs> into what we're doing. Um, basically, uh, how this uh, inspiration for this series started was... You know, at 1 a.m. I was watching some Bob's Burgers while I fell asleep to Bob's Burgers on YouTube. Um, so, you know, I fell asleep to it, woke up, watched some Bob's Burgers, um, and an ad popped up that was six minutes long, a little over. And it was, it, well, it looks like from, you know, tired brain Kusk's perspective, a kid who was like 12 to 16 years old rapping in a new metal band that is very P.O.D. influenced and his dad's in there, maybe a couple people off of Craigslist some of the guitars seem a little off because, like, I don't even know, some of the guitars sound like it was added from added from Music Maker Jam probably is a rough accusation, it's just I'm not used to very clean produced music because I love, I like garage music mostly um, if you have looked at my vinyl collection, uh, so, or my Spotify, <laughs> if you really want, um, honesty there. I enjoy garage music in more, uh, I guess lo-fi is a correct term, unclean, um, you know, production. So it just might be the production, but some of the guitars did seem a little bit off. But I guess that could just be my personal preferences too. Honestly, I'm not gonna throw... <laughs> you know, that out, saying, oh, the guitars were off, you know, because honestly, do, do I really know shit? No. <laughs> but, yeah, I felt like the guitars were off. I'm not sure if I'm right on that or not. But yeah, you know, that happened. I was really shocked that a band like this existed today, so I was like, damn, I should make a review of this. I should actually listen to their new EP that they have you know, for this ad, which is like their first music video, and that that is what this video is. It is overdue, but it's here finally. So, I, I you know what, I, I'd better late than never. Anyways, this band's called Alarm for War, and the, the like, the main rapper person, um, lead singer, I'm not sure if you, I should call him the lead rapper or the lead singer, you know, it is a 13 year old, like, yeah, you know what, kudos to him, you know, when I was 13, I was a scene kid, so, you know what, I, I feel proud of him in a sense that he is going after his dreams at a young age, you know, what? good, good for you, man. I believe in following your dreams and seeing if they work out, so, you know what, good, good, good for this kid, alright? Anyways... I decided to listen to their newest EP released in, on July 28th, 2017. I, I like saw the ad in early August, so just to give you a time perspective. And the EP is called Enemies of the State, and I did give it a listen. Because I'm like, hey, you know, might as well review it. Because this is the most weirdest thing I've ever seen on YouTube ads. And you know what, I did listen to it. Some of the songs did have that off guitar, which just might be my personal preference. And, but, you know, overall, it is a pretty solid first EP, you know. It's not my style, but it's a pretty solid first EP. I do like some new metal, but <laughs> it's post-new metal, okay? I do like some older stuff, like, you know, Linkin Park, R.I.P. You know, I, I do like stuff like that, but, um, and that one P.O.D. song. <laughs> <laughs> that one P.O.D. song. Y yikes. I, I, just how I said that, but, you know, that's basically it for the old stuff, you know. If we're gonna talk about the more newer, um, things in that genre, you know, like, post new metal. Technically, Spotify calls it alternative metal. I like Motionless and White and Kane Hill. 
which is like n not anything like this. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't think this band would very much appreciate Kane Hill, but um, <laughs> you know, let, let's just move on to the review. So honestly, I don't, I'm not really into this, but you know, for a first DP, from an objective viewpoint, I have to say this is pretty solid, you know. Obviously, I did catch up on the POD influence a little too much, but, um, you know, that, that should be expected with every band's first, like, solid thing they put out, okay? You have to expect massive influence. Obviously, Icon for Higher Scripted wasn't the first thing they put out. Um, that was, like, really supposed to be eye-catching, but, you know, that was pretty influenced, too. Like, that, that album was, you know, another version of Paramore that was slightly more edgy. But honestly, I do love Scripted, though. It's just, that, that is the truth. <laughs> um, but, you know, with newer bands, you have to expect that their style has to, like, slowly evolve to a point where they find themselves and can create something that sounds newer. So another band that was coined as a ripoff, you know, edgy paramour was New Year's Day. Um, when My Dear was released, that was like the first major release for New Year's Day. They went on Warp Tour that year. Um, yeah, that was like their first like thing that they really put out to the world. And honestly, that was a ripoff Paramore. I do not like that album. I never did. All right, I'm sorry. I was never down with that album. And it did come out when Paramore was in their prime and Riot came out. It was the same year. So obviously, New Year's Day and Icon for Hire are very different from their first albums. They're not edgy Paramore anymore. You can separate them from Haley Williams. <laughs> Basically, you know, New Year's Day is much heavier. Icon for Hire is much more electronic now. So with that being said, you know, Panic in the Disco did what Icon for Hire and New Year's Day did in reverse. Um, their first thing they put out was a burlesque, well, what they really put out, Brendan had, like, a random single before this. They put out this random album, uh, that was very burlesque style, and they were, like, 17 and from Utah, so it was really random, okay? And honestly, it was pretty interesting because no one was really doing burlesque style stories where there's, like, mimes and, uh, weddings and cheating w with weddings and mimes and uh, goldfish heads like uh, what, what was fever but anyways you know fever you can't sweat out obviously the imagery of it was iconic for its time still is it's an iconic emo album and you know nothing that panic made after that could match up to fever like you know, what they did after that was a 1960s theme, and obviously the 60s have been done before, and, you know, I think bands do redo the 60s. I think the Black Keys is just that. But the Black Keys does rock it. I mean, I do enjoy some things from the Black Keys. Like, I'm not saying the Black Keys are crap because they have a 60s style. That is not what I'm saying. And Cage of the Elephant did that because, you know, they, they worked with the Black Keys. Um... <laughs> You know, bands do go after that angle at some point, so, but, you know, it, that's what I mean. The 60s thing has been probably done before in the 2000s if it has been done in the 2010s. I feel like it's just a very common thing, to be honest, to go back to the 60s, but I think that just might be me too. And then after the 60s, pretty odd phase, came Vices and Virtues, which was basically steampunk fever, and then... You know, Too Weird to Live, Too Rare to Die came out, which was more Brendan and Spencer saying, hey, we're back, but nope, Spencer's gone again. And, well, no, Spencer left. <laughs> I think that's the right term. They were both gone. Brendan still stayed and became the Brendan Yuri Project. So the Brendan Yuri Project made Death of a Bachelor, which was meant to be Fever, but it was more... Brendan's love baby of ballads for his life. I felt like that was Death of a Bachelor, to be honest. And why do I say that? Well, it takes three days to conceive a baby, and if you really think about it, Death of a Bachelor is nine months after his birthday, plus three days. 
look it up. I'm not lying, I figured that out because I'm like, hey, this is kind of interesting. Like, it does seem like nine months apart since, you know, Brendan's an Aries and Death of the Bachelor is a Capricorn. Um, my, I remember that because my friend bought me Death of a Bachelor on CD for my birthday and gave it to me on my birthday part, well, gave it, gave it to me at my birthday party, which was a week after my birthday. And that, that's why I remember that because it just came in the mail and it was like a day after the release date. So that is why I remember like when Death of a Bachelor was released. But you know, that's how Panic the Disco kind of played out. So honestly, if a band does not offer the most original thing, maybe it's a good, like at first it is probably a good thing because later on they're going to find their sound. They're not going to establish something really solid at first and then be like, hey, we're gonna not match up to this. You know, it's like when you go back to school, they tell you to not do the best on your first paper so everything else looks great. <laughs> Honestly, that that is a main precedent that is set by album, well, al first albums and first EPs too. So I can't really complain that this album has a lot of influence. But yeah, I do feel some guitars are off. But honestly, again, just might be me not really liking actual new metal. But um, and, you know, being more into Infamous by Motionless and White, that album and like Kane Hill, you know. That is like the new metal I like and that's post new metal, that is more industrial. But when it comes to this album, obviously, they're gonna find their sound over time. And honestly, the 13 year old, you know, little buggy knows how to spit some bars, I'm not gonna lie, he does rap really good. Um, and yeah, you know, it's solid for a first impression, it's not too impre- well, it well, I guess it is, it does have a lot of, um, uh, what's it, what was I gonna say? I, I hate this, Mercury Retrograde, why you, why you do this to my brain? Um, it has a lot of, you know, influence, but, you know, I think that influence is so old that it's honestly weird to see today, and that's what makes it kind of, that, that's what makes the CP kind of stand out, because you don't believe that it was made in 2017. And honestly, I think that it might be a good angle because I made a review on it, even though I don't like this kind of music. So yeah, that was my overall opinions on Alarm for War at the moment. The first out of many YouTube ad bands, probably, I don't know, maybe many, maybe only out of two, who knows. Um, next band is gonna be Illuminati Hotties. Um, that is literally the name of it. Uh, yeah, Illum- Illum- in- Ah! I can't type. Oh, yeah, they're called Illuminati Hotties. And yeah, we are going to review their You're Better Than Ever single, uh, in the next video of the series. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, have a nice day, peace out, you know, follow me if you want to see that review, comment down below uh, if, if I should continue after that review, and yeah, I hope you all have a lovely day.